All right, so uh, Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome. It, today is our uh, first teaching and learning um, call of the year. So uh, hopefully you had a good holiday and are ready to get back to work. Um, the agenda link is there in the chat if you'd like to go ahead and sign in, please. And we'll start off with just a couple of quick announcements. Um, the first one, you may have seen, I announced this like right before uh, the holidays. Um, the Confluence migration is complete. So if you go to, the old Confluence is actually still there. We haven't shut it down yet, but it's read only. Um, so it, you can't really make any changes to anything. Um, we're gonna be shutting down the old Confluence probably um, within you know the next week or two. The new Confluence link, um, if you go here, this will take you to kind of the landing page. And, um, and that's the, um, the one that's on um, Atlassian Cloud. So it's kind of in the same cloud site as the new JIRA. So both of those applications are now running on cloud. And we did migrate everything over. Um, but I archived a bunch of old spaces that hadn't seen a lot of updates in a very, very, very long time. <laughs> um, so I archived a good amount of stuff. And I also um, swapped out the, the landing page. The old landing page had, again, a lot of outdated info. So I put a new landing page up with some links to some of the more um, current spaces. Um, but there's still quite a bit of updating that needs to happen. So if you happen to be um, an author in any of these spaces, like uh, in QA or, um, or maybe um, some of the other working groups like UX, um, there's still some old content in those spaces, which um, should probably be either um, updated or, or archived. So we'll be working on that kind of as we go. Um, but just a heads up that um, to make any changes to pages, you'll need to go to the new Confluence site. Um, so, uh, and if anybody needs to author um, in a particular place and you're not able to for whatever reason, let me know. We sh The default permissions should have come over, but we had some issues um, migrating Confluence. So we ended up having to bring over just the content and not the users and groups. Um, so none of the like names were mapped to the people who edited the content. You'll still see the edit dates, but you won't see like who made the change because unfortunately we had to, to drop that information out um, just to get the pages to come over. But um, everyone should have gotten the default editing um, permissions. So if you need elevated permissions in a particular space, just let me know and I can I can uh, bump up your permissions if you're kind of the person in charge of updating certain pages. Um, so that probably won't apply to a lot of you, but some of you might. So, um, so feel free to, to let me know if you need anything along those lines. Um, another announcement is Sakai Days. We're planning for Sakai Days um, this month, January 24th and 25th, and it's gonna be online. There's a link in Etherpad to the agenda, um, and uh, feel free to add items to that, particularly on day two. Um, there's a couple of um, ideas for workshops and or um, birds of a feather type discussions. Um, so definitely more room there. We haven't mapped out the exact times of day each day that we'll be meeting. So I'll be sending around a, like a, a poll or a survey to, to pick the time slots. Um, and we'll kind of, uh, you know, fine tune the agenda once we know um, what times of day um, the meeting will take place. But it will be virtual. Um, at one point, um, Dr. Chuck was thinking about adding a, um, an in-person watch party component. Um, and that idea kind of got squashed with Omicron. So um, so there will no, no longer be any plans for any sort of Florida watch party. But if you wanted to have a local watch party, that you're still perfectly welcome to do that. Um, but we're gonna, the hub of the, the discussion will take place online. Um, <clears throat> does anybody else have any announcements? 
And we're a small group today, so. Wilma, for the record, do you want to make an announcement regarding the um, status of the Sakai updates? Oh, you mean the, the current releases? Current build. Yeah, um, sure. Um, Fresh my memory. I've got vacation amnesia. <laughs> so make sure I say the right versions. Um, all right, hang on one second. So the last releases that Didn't were 21.2 drop. Yes, 21.2 dropped. And um, I think was it 20.5? Am I am I remembering that correctly? I mean, let me look because um I want to tell you the wrong point number. Um, I fumble through my files here to find my notes. I should have this at the tip of my tongue, but I don't. Okay. Place emails. Okay. Yes, it was 20.5 that was um released right before everyone went on holiday december 17th ish and um the 21.2 release came out at the beginning of december i think it was like the 7th or 8th that, that one was released so those are the two most current versions the 20.5 release will probably quite likely be the last release in the 20 um, version uh, unless there's like a major bug fix or something, but that'll probably be the last one because it's pretty long in the tooth at this point. Um, and uh, a lot of our focus now is shifting to 22 and even 23 um, to get those releases kind of um, QA'd and, and ready to go. So, um, so 21.2, if you were waiting for that to upgrade, um, it's available now, so if anybody needs to apply fixes or whatever um, before the start of class or, you know, depending when your classes start, they may have already started back, but um, it is out there. Oh, and thank you, Adam, for posting those two announcements. Those have more detail on the, um, the actual items that are fixed in each version. So if you're interested, you can view the release notes now in the new and improved confluence um, to see what individual JIRAs and uh, features were incorporated into those two maintenance releases. All right. So um, if nobody has any other announcements, we will move on to our uh, Jira Palooza for today. Now I'm looking in the um, the Etherpad, and it looks like a lot of these were Tiffany items. Um, I know a lot of times we, we like to have Tiffany here when it's a Tiffany item because she always has a lot to say about these. Um, the only one I see in the list that's not a Tiffany item is one that Dave Eveland um, put in there about checklists. So I will leave it to the group. Do you guys have a particular JIRA that you'd like to discuss? Um, and do you want to talk about uh, the Dave one first and then maybe a couple of Tiffany's or um, we can proceed however you guys like? I think the order you suggest is good. I think we can take a look at the Dave one and then try and uh, go through Tiffany's. Um, one thing that I'm not seeing in the chat is a link to the Etherpad, and the Teaching and Learning Conference Call page doesn't have this meeting and the upcoming meetings for a link to the Etherpad. There you go. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I was busy updating release pages so I didn't get around to updating the teaching and learning page but I actually I have to post all the recordings from last year or a good number of them anyway so I'll be updating those um like well we think shortly. you can do everything but you can't do everything <laughs> I try but yeah it doesn't always happen <laughs> you make everything um, look so easy we just expect <laughs> all right let me go ahead and screen share so that we can all kind of have something to look at particularly in the recording which tends to be a little dry when there's no screen share 
So let me just go ahead and do that. So you guys should be seeing my screen, yes? No, if you're if you're seeing it on mine, it looks really small. I don't know if something changed with the blue button. We can see it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um. <clears throat> all right. So let's take a look at Dave's. All right. So this has to do with. Um, the automatic checklist links. And he's saying that they don't import, um, I guess, when you roll them from course to course. So he tested these, it looks like a while ago on 19 and 20. Um, but it looks like it's still um, not fixed. So it's still out there. Um, so in lessons, if you create a checklist in a lesson area, where it's going to automatically mark them if a uh, student submits an assignment or, or what have you. Um, then you import that site to another site. Um, it looks like all the other links within lessons will work, but the checklist and its checklist items, let's see, didn't import. So the checklist and the checklist items are imported with the that are associated with required lessons items did not import. Um, hmm. Okay, well, that definitely sounds like a bug. Um, a lot of times these tend to be more feature request type JIRAs, but let's see. No, this does seem like a bug. Yeah. It should be copying it over so that you don't have to. And it looks like it, it looks to the user or at least like it was checked when it's not. I'm reading it correctly. It looks like um, this was tested in October again, um, and it, uh, it's still an issue. So I don't know that I have anything to say about this one other than it looks like a bug. Does anybody else have anything that they'd like to add? There's a linked issue on that one that is also a bug and very important, but it is never got triaged, probably because we were all busy. That was from February, last February, 2020, not 2021, so eternally ago. <laughs> yeah, feels like forever. All right, so this one here, the lessons um, on, is that the one you're talking about? Yep. It's related to the automatic checklist that it doesn't work, but if it is an automatic checklist to a test item, the students see a like grayed out, unreadable. Uh, the second screenshot there is the student view. Oh, wow. And yeah, that's not good. Particularly if you make use of a lot of checklists, that's a lot of relinking. Mm -hmm. I have not retested that in any recent version um, to see if that's still a problem. I just saw it again now. Right. I put that on my things to check today, see if that's still with newer versions and possibly open it if it is. Yeah, because you're the, the, the Jira triage queen, so <laughs> you, can, you can bump that up. All right. Any other thoughts on this one? I think it's pretty. 
seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's definitely a bug. Definitely needs fixing. Um, the extent to the bugginess is yet to be determined, but uh, looks like it's definitely an issue. So, okay, um, let's go back to, oops. All right, so here's our list. This up that we've already talked about it. What was that um, number? The other one that was related. I put it in there. Oh, you did? Okay. Thank you. Cool. All right. So, um, I guess we'll dive into some of Tiffany's. So, let's look at the group lacking one. First in the list. Okay, so this is about the assignments reacting to group changes. I think I remember seeing this one um, recently. I don't know if it's seen any work yet. Um, I believe Tiffany said that they were working on this locally, ABA. Um, yeah, okay, we needed to check on that. It looks like some of the UVA developers need to be added in, uh, in JIRA. But, um, but yeah, they were working on a fix for this at, at UVA. Basically, um, the, the idea is that uh, rather than locking the groups, um, which can really muck up the process of like, you know, enrolling people. And if you're doing add drop or you have any kind of group changes during the semester, um, if there's assignments with that are assigned to groups, um, you don't want to lose data, obviously, but you want the groups to be able to, or the assignments to be able to um, recognize the current members in the group as opposed to locking the group so that there can't be any changes. Um, so I think the way that they were working on this was to make it such that it will um, correctly uh, reassign permissions to the people that are currently in the group, um, even if they leave the group. If they leave the group, they lose access to the group stuff. Um, but if they are added to the group, they gain access. Um, so I think that was, um, the, the way that they were approaching it, which to me makes a whole lot of sense. Um, any other comments on, oh, and Christine is mentioning importing assignments with groups and publishing them before you set up the groups. Yeah, that could um, also create some snags in the workflow. So if it can adapt a little bit easier to those group changes, that would be great. I don't know if there were any comments on this other than about access to JIRA. <laughs> it looks like all the comments are about accessing the new JIRA, if there's any older ones. Um, Yeah, she's just kind of explaining here how it, how it works. Um, so does this approach make sense to all of you? Christina says Derek's probably getting retired of unlocking groups. <laughs> Yeah, I think this sounds like a very good solution. I hope it's uh, distributed soon because it would be 
Very nice. I know there's been a lot of frustration with the group locking. And that was really kind of a band-aid solution um, to, you know, the data loss, which was a worse problem. Um, but it wasn't the ideal solution because it, it created some, some issues in the, the instructor workflow. Um, all right. So I will move this one up as well. So I'll, I'll go back after the call and put some comments on here that we looked at them. Uh, So let's take a look at the next one, which is uh, statistics student view. This one also looks kind of like a bug, but let's see. I see some screenshots here, so maybe they're just suggested. Um, UI change. All right, so as a student clicking any subject links in the messages author table, it results in a blank page. Um, so you get this, which is not terribly informative. Okay, so any subject results in that. Looks like it is resolved in this one. Take a look. That doesn't make any sense. This is all about print stuff. Okay, I'm not sure if this is still an issue. Me. Up here, it looks like this was. It looks like it's fixed in um, in 22. Um, so hopefully, this has already been addressed. So let's see. Andrew says it was failing. Yeah. It's March for Merge needs to be verified. Okay. Um, oh, no, wait. I keep getting confused. I'm used to the comments going older uh, to newer. This, this is all this with newest on the top. So it looks like as of September 27th, Andrea said it was failing, but then Marcus said that it was fixed. Um, so I think this one needs verification. Um, we can't really tell if it's been fixed or not. I don't know what the, the proposed fixed was, if it shows like the actual message or if it's supposed to be showing something different. Um, I would assume it would show something other than a blank page. Uh, but it looks like there is uh, a commit and a merge out there. So hopefully this has already been addressed. Move that one up. Sorry about that, guys. My dogs. Were... No worries. I just wanted to say Happy New Year. <laughs> Glad to have right. more participants. Yeah, <laughs> more people on the call. They think they're people anyway. Um, all right, so moving should, on. For the juniors um, that have been reviewed, should we mark them with the TL reviewed tag? Yeah, I, I, I was going to do that afterward. If you want to mark them now, go ahead. I did. 
I didn't know whether or not we needed to say any more other than the fact that it was TL reviewed. Yeah, um, not unless we had a, a comment, which on these we really didn't other than looks good. Um, one of them was a bug. So we just kind of verified it. Um, if you have any additional information that you think would add to the overall. So far, these seem to be pretty no brainers. Yeah, yeah. So um, if we had a comment like, oh, yeah, this would be great, but or we suggest you also do blah, 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 then yeah, we would put a comment. But so far, they're pretty straightforward. I think these have been in our parking lot for a while. So they may have been addressed in the meantime since um, since they were first suggested. Which is good. It means we're getting this stuff. All right. So this one is the new statistics tab. I don't think that's a new tab, is it? Maybe it's a new at UVA. Is that who? No, oh, is it John that reported. New statistics tab and discussions allows students to see their own metrics and behaviors. Um, we added some, wow, there's a whole bunch under here. Is that indeed new? I didn't think it was. Can somebody correct me if I'm wrong? I'm wondering if it was maybe something they just didn't have turned on. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like all of these are related to the student view of their own stats in um, in discussions. So, uh, and there's a couple of duplicates, looks like. Um, most of which have been resolved. There's only one that's still open, but it says clone. So I'm thinking that's probably a duplicate. Um, and then there's one that's in progress. This one's talking about currently hidden topics or group permissions. That could be related to the fact that the permissions are a little different in discussions um, versus other tools. But it looks like this one is still open. And then um, another one. Where's another one? I'm not seeing it. Okay, it looks like that was the only one that's currently still open. Do you guys have any thoughts on, on any of the student statistics views? Quite, quite. My dog does, but... <laughs> Other than that, I don't think anybody has much to say about this one. So no, it looks like it's been largely addressed. So I'm going to just get that one out of here. At least we're kind of cleaning house. We're going to have a nice new uh, uncluttered Jira parking lot for next time. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> Tiffany hasn't been on the TNL calls, though, so she needs to go make more Jiras. Yeah, well, I'm sure she will. <laughs> That's a very <laughs> Tiffany kind of thing to do. <laughs> so, They're making more Jiras. They just haven't all been TL coded. So I had already clicked into the um, default export option for Samago that is the next Jira in the parking lot. And uh, reading through the activity, um, there, it appears as if work had been done in October, but um, in late October, it said it wasn't fixed properly in trunk. And in November, Tiffany commented saying that there was supposed to be an accessibility fix. So um, I'm a little unclear regarding what the status is of this. There is a fixed version tentative for 22. Right. And it does say resolved and fixed. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks like there's a couple of accessibility. One to do with the radio button options and then something about the table. Um, so hopefully those will get resolved. I know that um, EDF was working on a few accessibility JIRAs. I don't know if this was one of them or not, but I, I do know that they were focusing on some of the accessibility fixes that were kind of out there pending. Um, so hopefully this one is should we not, that not re resolved. Should we reopen it? Because right now it's unless you're reading the comments, it looks like yay, it's fixed. Yeah, well, I don't know if it got fixed since November. Maybe that was just the last comment. I haven't actually tested it. I don't know. I wouldn't want to change the status and then it was actually good, you know? The status was marked as resolved and fixed on October 27th. But then Sam on October 27th yeah. said yeah. it was not fixed properly in trunk. But he says to see this other hmm. era. So I think maybe um, this one is specific to the issue about the radio button option, maybe, or option. Yeah, the link, the one Sam created that is now fixed. I wonder if the better option might be to just put a comment in there for Tiffany asking if the screen reader is still an issue, and if so, make a new JIRA just for that one. Yeah, I think that's a good approach. You mind making that comment, Christina? Sure. This one. Um, bulk edit options in Gradebook. This is the next one. I don't know if this one, we've looked at this one a lot, I think. Um, there were some different options. Okay, so she's, oh, wait, maybe she opened a new one. This, this is similar to a different one, I think, that we had talked about before, where we were talking about um, having like a bulk edit. And it looks like Tiffany opened a new one because she doesn't want to edit, she doesn't want to combine the bulk edit UI with um, other features. So, just the one. Oh, maybe, maybe we should want. Did we combine these two into one button before? I can't remember. I think they were talking about um, combining it. It looks like back in last May from the comments. Okay, maybe that's what it was. She wants to keep bulk edit as a separate thing from item order. Is that that's what I'm seeing? She's saying that the category thing should be added to. I, I can see is. Where coming from because with the bulk edit, you've got you know the gradebook item, the checkout boxes for include, 
and cal including the calculations, adding another possible drop down for categories, mm -hmm. and then being able to reorder that whole thing. Yeah, I agree. And I think I had commented on this one a while back that I thought it would be a good, yeah, it would be useful. Mm -hmm. um, so, because uh, I don't know about you, but it's it's super annoying to me when I have to go back and edit each item to change categories <laughs> after I've added like a whole bunch of new stuff that, before I added a category for it. Um, so, so I do think that would be a good thing. Does anybody have any thoughts on, you know, any changes to this? Um, or is it just kind of makes sense under bulk edit? I think putting the categories makes absolute sense on bulk edit, although I do agree with Tiffany that the reorder should be its separate option. Yeah. All right. I hate to leave the two of you, but I'm going to have to drop off to prepare for an 11 o'clock meeting. So thank you very much. Uh, Thanks have for very, joining, Adam. Have a very happy new year. Take care and stay healthy. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Adam. And let's see. I'm, I'm seeing if we can clear the whole list here. <laughs> open. There's only two left. We got 20 minutes. So, all right. So let's take a look at this one. Um, make add edit assignment page have more intuitive organization. So this is reordering the overall assignments page. It looks like it's been resolved already. I know that there were some changes made um, at one point. Oh, no, wait, these are just related issues. I know there were a lot of changes made to the organization of the assignment settings, and I don't know if this JIRA came out before or after that. Um, see what order they're in now. All right, so actually look at something. Let's see. The assignment settings don't look like they're too changed from what I've known. Yeah, uh, I mean, it wasn't dramatic, but I, I do recall there being some ordering changes. There, there was some a little bit, yeah. but not the drastic one she's proposing. Yeah. Okay, so... Here we have we have title, then assignment instructions, then um, availability. So Tiffany is proposing get too many windows open. In trunk, it's title, instructions, the honor pledge checkbox, add attachments, and then availability. Yeah. Okay. So she's proposing title, assign to, um, then availability, then submissions, grading, and assignments instructions. Um, so that would basically move this box all the way under. It would be assigned to be this block first. And then availability, and then groups, or submission type.
breastfeeding. I don't know. What do you guys think about having the instructions so far down the list? I mean, I can kind of see some of the, like the sign too, maybe would make sense to have higher up um, or the submission type, but I kind of want to have the description higher up in the list. I feel like you'd have to go a long way to get to the box where you type in what they have to do. Um, I guess it depends how often do instructors normally change the assignments instructions versus the settings. You mean for an existing assignment? Yeah. If you're going in to edit one semester to semester. Yeah, I could see that would definitely be different than creating a new one. You'd want the instructions higher up. But if it's something that you're just updating, then maybe not. I wonder if maybe having it collapsible would help. You can collapse the instructions and they don't take up the room. But they're still up there at the top. Um, if you're making a new one. Yeah, I'm making a comment here for one suggestion I'd make to her proposed groupings, which is to put the allow resubmissions actually in the availability. Not in the submission? Yeah, the allow resubmissions checkbox and date. Just to have all the things in there that would have, you know, dates together. So that way it's the instructor doesn't have to scroll up and down if they want to set the resubmission date to be the same, you know, one week after the due date. You know, how, how much scrolling up and down do they have to do to be able to double check what they put in above. Right. Whereas if you had all the dates together, it'd be very easy to say date, date, date. Yeah, I could see that. Or yeah, at least right underneath it. Yeah. So that it's not. Open date, due date, except until allow resubmissions until. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Anything else? No, there's a. All this stuff is, I think, more or less in the order it is now, right? The submission notification, least grade notification, additional information, right? Those are, if you take all, if you move all the other ones, that's where they end up. <laughs> the submission notification email is kind of right in the middle of the options, which is kind of an obnoxious place for it. Yeah, it should definitely be with the other notifications. So all the notifications are together. But if you move grading out of there, then they end up together. So. Grading and the like originality check if you've got turned it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I like all of these except for possibly um, getting a few more opinions on the location of the instructions block and whether or not it should be collapsible um, as an alternative to moving it down. Um, I'd just be interested to see what other folks think about that one. That would be the only change I would. I can go back and comment on this one, unless you already have. I only threw in a comment about how I would put uh, the resubmissions up with the availability dates, just to have all the dates together. Right. 
Um, I'll go back and make a comment there about the assignment instructions. And then our last one, feature request to improve assignment type functionality. I think we've talked about this one in the past. It has to be continued on there. Um, I kind of have a problem with this one a little bit because I don't like assignment types at all. <laughs> I never use them because I think they're confusing. Uh, I think Tiffany's idea here is that they, you know, because they're confusing, people don't use them, but it, it's a feature that could actually be useful if implemented correctly. I don't know how many people actually use them, so I'm reluctant to spend a lot of time fixing it if it's something that people aren't actively using. So don't, I don't know. What about you, Christina? Do you use assignment types? We don't use or the assessment, assessment types. Sorry. We don't use the assessment types other than the default, and I've gone in and changed the settings there to lock down um, some issues, some things, or to set the default to be what most of our instructors use after I did a poll. Mm -hmm. But I we don't have the different types available. Yeah, a, a lot of institutions don't because it, it seems to be a difficult concept for a lot of faculty, mm -hmm. um, particularly if they create something in an assessment type that they didn't mean to, like they created in the wrong one and then they can't get back in to change it. Mm -hmm. It's very frustrating. Um, yeah, and then if they choose a type where some of the options they want are, you know, not just set to something they don't care about by default, but it's locked down. Right, right, or or hidden, they can't even see them. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I think for that reason, a lot of people just turn off or, or make it so that they're not really visible or available for faculty. Mm -hmm. um, her feature request is to improve the available options prevent the support issues. So she's got several. So she's trying to address the reasons that we just said that people don't use these mm -hmm. um, by fixing them all. Um, again, I think my question would be, do they, is this really, an, an, is there a need for this fix? Or, would it be that useful to fix? I know from where I'm sitting, it wouldn't be because we've got so many instructors using so many types of assessment that trying to set pre-made types for us would just be, I'd have to have like 20 of them Yeah. at least. So it's easier for me to set the default assessment type to lock down the options that we don't want them you know necessarily changing like i actually think the only option we have that they can't change is the auto submit mm -hmm. because we've had so many problems with the tests oh you didn't check the auto submit so it's stuck in pending for eternity and it never gets graded right so we have that set and lo locked down mm -hmm. but all the others we've just got them set to what my poll revealed was the most commonly used options and then let the instructors change everything to meet their specific needs right yeah i mean that, i would agree that would be my approach um, i mean ma maximum flexibility for the instructors mm -hmm. i'd say we'd be far better off making the settings page as clear and dare I say it idiot proof <laughs> as possible so that way they can't necessarily get themselves in trouble with that yeah yeah I would I would agree I just I think given the number of Jira's that are out there that need attention, the, these would not rise to the top of the list in my priority list anyway. Because mm -hmm. um, I think I, I like the option of, of having it 
more flexible for custom, you know, use cases and people can kind of set up their quizzes however they like and not be restrained, I guess, by the different types if they pick a different one or having to kind of parse that information mentally as to, wait, what type of assessment do I want here? And, you know, I think it just, it creates more kind of cognitive overload <laughs> for people. So, um, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna comment that we reviewed this one, but I'm not gonna add any comments on the JIRA um, because I, I, it's been sitting out there for a while. So I think unless somebody really cares about it, it's probably not gonna get addressed. So if, if, if mm -hmm. someone with a real need for that wants to tackle it, great. <laughs> but, but I don't think that um, so far, a lot of people have expressed. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, we made it through our parking lot, which is great. So we can start the year fresh with a, a new um, room for, for new JIRAs. So if you think of any that you wanna discuss on our next call in two weeks, um, or if you have a topic that you'd like to discuss, um, not ne necessarily specific to a JIRA, let me know. I'm happy to, um, you know, just put a topic for discussion out there for the meeting, um, or, you know, if, if we don't have a presentation of some sort. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you for thank you for joining. Voice on here because it's like I'm mm. I, I'm a very I, I represent a very s s small subset of Sakai users. <laughs> community college without you know the big you know the divisional policies and such. Right. Right. So yeah, I'm but you show up, so you get a voice. <laughs> So it's like with a lot of things, I'm coming at it from a completely different perspective than like Tiffany does with UVA. Yeah, yeah. And it, I'm sure it makes sense for them locally, but it doesn't make sense for other people. So, you know. Um, yeah. Well, anyway, thank you for, for joining and participating today. And I hope you have a very happy uh, start to your new year and your new classes and uh, new semester. <laughs> And we'll talk again in a couple of weeks, if not sooner. Yep. A couple of weeks is when our classes start. Countdown. Oh boy. To <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. You are currently the only person in this conference.